technologies out there too, yeah. uh, like fuel cells. That's another thing. This technology, is, it's not a fuel cell, okay? A lot of people I see them say, uh, HHO fuel cells, uh, water fuel cells, and Dan Meyer was great at that. The fuel cell works the other way, okay? It combines hydrogen oxygen and produces electricity. It's not really a fuel cell. All you're trying to do is just pick up on the fuel cell marketing out there, you know, with the uh, hydrogen technologies. And that's gonna end up coming back to bite us in the end because it is uh, a misuse of terminology. <laughs> yes, uh, like uh, the, that one study where they added uh, metal to the aluminum to produce it. Okay. Well, that's the most common use of aluminum. Yeah, and you've got waste products to deal with to get rid of or recycle these chemical processes. Nah, it's okay. My health is a lot better than I used to be. By the way, I, I had congestive heart failure, pulmonary edema. A lot of you knew, um, well, I didn't know what caused it, and it was uh, uh, Gulf War syndrome. So, I, I no longer have that, and I'm recovering. Why don't you go into the biggest problem within the computers and the difference between all the different computers with the different brands, and that's why you're focusing on trucks instead of cars. Did you hear me? I think we gather what you said. We're talking about uh, computers. The, re the reason you're not going into cars is the marketing uh, aim of the company is because they're going after trucks because a lot of the trucks don't have computers at all. And the cars have so many variations among all the different dealers and computers. And you were telling me, you know, field trims, and the, what are the things in general that they have to fight with the present auto computers? Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the issue, most of the problems that people are having with the ECUs uh, are directly related to fuel trim. So you'll put a system on a vehicle and it works, it's a great uh, improvement, and works for a while and then all of a sudden it goes away. But what happens? The computer learns. So if you go in there and you turn off the fuel trim, some of them call it adaptive learning, and that eliminates that. Uh, but there's really, there's a lot of different types of systems out there that makes the automotive market a challenge. And I'd rather focus time on just getting production, getting units out there. So, and like I said, I leave that to the experts. We have a guy on staff over there at PTI that, uh, and by the way, I don't work for PTI. I just spend time there answering phones, answering questions, just like you all have questions. A lot of people call in with questions, and I do a lot of that. And I uh, also like to make sure that they're keeping on top of the quality and the things, you know, catching up on things. But I, I, I do my research there. There is a lot of, a lot of people out there that have experience with these automotive systems. And I mean, I've met, I've met quite a few. They really know their stuff. And they know exactly what the mechanisms are that, that take place in these uh, vehicle systems that cause them to not want to be injected with hydroxy gas. And believe it, when I say the automotive industry has a lot to do with that, they're aware of this technology and they don't want this technology out there. Um, I was offered uh, a deal and uh, can't really say it publicly, which automotive company offered me $300 million to buy my residence drive technology just so they could shelve it. Not gonna happen, not gonna happen. I don't care, 300 million, 300 million, I don't care, it's all just numbers. What am I gonna do, wallpaper my home with bills? I mean, as long as I'm happy, I've got everything I need, I don't need the money. That's not why I do this. Bob, there's a debate going on uh, about the volume of HHO you need to produce to 
get results. Some say you can have a fraction of a liter uh, if it burns efficiently, if it, if it advances the timing and gives you a diagonal instead of a straight down stroke on the piston, uh, you'll, you'll gain a lot of efficiency and, and save a lot of gas. Uh, others say you need a liter uh, for every liter of engine capacity. Okay. Is, is there merit on both sides of that argument or only one? It's working. It's just, I have to get really close to it. <laughs> I have to eat the microphone. Um, yeah, some some vehicles respond better than others, obviously. Um, the the rule of thumb that we use, uh, I, I try to use, and it works in most instances, is one quarter to one half in liter per minute for every liter of displacement of the engine. Um, Different vehicles respond differently. You can res you can put in a little bit and get a little bit of improvement, but you're not going to get as much improvement as if you put in more. Whereas some vehicles, you put in uh, even a quarter of a liter per minute per liter of displacement, and it's too much for that vehicle. Like for instance, I don't know, the, no, the Toyota Prius. I have a Prius, half a liter per minute is all I can put into that. And they more than that it starts negatively impacting fuel economy. And because it's an earlier model Prius, I can't just plug in the computer and reprogram it. 1.5 liter. It's because of the way the ECU is actually programmed to, to respond with. See, most of the time you'll get an uh, increase in MAP airflow sensor reading when you run hydroxy gas. So that will cause a false reading that the engine is getting more air, which means it needs more fuel. And we've seen this. We've actually read this in a lot of systems that we've monitored the map of air uh, sensor values on. And so one way to deal with that would be to you know, inject your hydroxy gas after the map air, so air flow sensor. You can't always do that. Sometimes they're in a, in a hard, to, hard to bypass location. Um, the other way is to put a sensor modifier on there to restore it back to the factory settings, you know, whatever it was prior. Just remove that amount of signal from it. Um, I mean, it, it varies. But most of the improvements that have come from the small volumes of gas injected not been from the gas itself, it's typically from the water vapor that's injected along with the gas. Where that has the most improvement is in dry, arid environments, where that water vapor actually improves the combustion efficiency a bit. You know, you heard the old tale that the car runs better when it's wet out and raining out. Well, that's because some humidity will help, but if you're in an environment where there's already enough humidity, like most of the time here in Florida, then that doesn't help. It actually can inhibit, because you, you can get too much humidity in the air. Uh, 